I was watching a programme on the BBC recently. It was quite a fascinating programme. It was called Visions of the Future. And it was one of these golly gee whiz programmes about how great science is and how it's given us mastery over matter. And now we've achieved mastery over biology. And we're going to soon achieve mastery over intelligence and the, the, the theme was very much on intelligent machines there's this, there's this ongoing fascination for the notion that machines will become intelligent and certainly they can do a lot more than we can in terms of computations and one of the big things, one of the big breakthroughs in recent years is machines being able to perceive, being able to identify an image or an object out of a landscape or a street scene, being able to identify a car, for example. This is seen as a major breakthrough. And I'm sure it is. But the idea that machines are going to have awareness doesn't seem to me to hang together. Call me old fashioned if you like. But I think the idea that machines will have awareness only makes sense if you believe that ultimately we are mechanical. Ultimately that we're made up of very limited variety of molecules that in the course of time have somehow got together made themselves into complex organisms which do art, religion, create religions, create science and all the, and, and do wars and all the rest of it. So this is the scientific story, isn't it? If you leave a bunch of molecules around, a limited variety of molecules, mind you, there's only 92 naturally occurring ones, a variety of 92, leave them around long enough and they'll get up and start doing what we do. Well, they become us, basically. They'll become self-conscious. So if you believe that, that's the scientific story. If you believe that story, then you probably will feel, well, sure, as soon as machines get complicated enough, as soon as they've got enough connections going on in their electronic brains, they'll become self-aware. And they'll start telling jokes, they'll start sharing jokes with each other. They'll start telling stories. They'll start having dreams. They'll start having fantasies and daydreams. Something just doesn't seem to doesn't seem to fit here. Doesn't seem to. There seems to me to be a gap in the the continuity. There's a gap in this story. It's the same gap which, or it's the same kind of gap which, allows us to believe that we're experiencing a world out there in here. Somehow, a world out there is being experienced in here. The idea that this objective world somehow suddenly becomes a subjective experience and it's dependent on how electricity is processed by our brain. All our senses give us is electricity ultimately. All the senses do apparently is translate one kind of phenomenon or sensation into electricity. Touch is based on nerve endings, that's electrical. Sight is based on the optic nerve, that's electrical. Hearing, the same thing, it's all based on electrical, ele electricity. This is a scientific story. And somehow, which never really gets explained, somewhere in our brain all this electricity goes and gets transformed into the subjective experience of the phenomenal universe. That's a scientific story, and it's not very scientific at all, really, when you when you look at it closely. 
So we have our stories. This is what makes us human is we've got this tremendous capacity for making stories. I just don't think machines will ever do this. But as I say, maybe I'm being limited in my thinking, although I think it's actually limited to think that machines could do it. But these stories, this, this is what makes us human. This ability to create stories and not only create stories but to get involved in stories and to believe that these stories might actually be true. When we're young we're told fairy tales. Certain cultures you'll be told the story of Santa Claus who brings gifts to good children at Christmas. You believe it's true for a while but then you learn it's not true. But this process carries on. There's all st sorts of stories we might believe are true and then we realise aren't true. We like to believe these stories. People that are religious have their religious stories. They like to believe these stories are true. At some point, some of them might grow out of that. Science is stories. But you think, but surely science is true. Well, a proper scientist would tell you otherwise. Science is only theories. And what si the power of scientific stories is it allows us to manipulate our environment to quite a considerable extent. This is the power of the scientific stories. But other stories, relig religious stories or even drama, movies and so on, they all have their power, they all have their, their influence. Political stories, look at the power of political stories in the 20th century. It gave us communism and fascism. They're very powerful stories, Utop stories of utopia. These are very powerful stories. They, ha they have a powerful effect. So scientific stories are, are no more than that. And a good scientist will tell you, yes, all, all science provides us is with theories. They're effective ways of telling us a story about things which allow us to manipulate our environment. And we've got our dreams. Our dreams can be totally absurd and yet we are totally caught up in them. Afterwards we think, what was all that about? It was only a dream, only a dream. And yet this is what's happening all the time. It's all only a dream. And this is what the next chapter begins with. The sister continued, time, space and other factors in this so-called creation, which is in truth another aspect of the same consciousness, it's a story in other words, and none other than consciousness. It's consciousness telling itself stories. When it is realised that all these are but thoughts and notions and that the self is one and indivisible, how then are these regarded? as unreal. Can we say that stories are real or unreal? They have their own kind of truth. And yet we shouldn't forget that they're only stories. In this seed there is nothing but the seed, no diversity. At the same time there is the notion of potential diversity of flowers, fruits supposedly present in this seed. Even so, cosmic consciousness is one, devoid of diversity. Yet the universe of diversity is said to exist only in notion. It's all stories, it's consciousness creating stories which we all believe in to various degrees, 